Here at Roche Research and Early Development, Neuroscience and Large Molecule Research, we have a great interest in large molecules for brain disorders. We believe that these type of drug modalities will play an important role in the neuroscience R&D in the future. Especially brain disorders like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease, to name a few. However, so far, large molecules like antibodies have not yet been successfully used to treat different brain disorders. And the main reason for that is the blood-brain barrier, the BBB. The BBB is composed of specialized cells that separate the brain from the blood. It selectively prevents substances from entering the brain and that allow only essential molecules such as amino acid, oxygen, glucose and water across and exclude big molecules like antibodies. So the biggest hurdle is that we can't deliver these large molecules efficiently into the brain. This schematic illustration shows a cross-section of the BBB or the neurovascular unit. The key cell type is the endothelial cells. These cells are closely sealed together by tight junctions that prevent molecules to get through the DDB. Another important cell type is the parasites, which are assumed, based on some recent findings, to regulate the functionality of the endothelial cells. Another cell type is the astrocytes, which interact with the endothelial cells through the so-called N-feeds. Our paper shows for the first time the importance of understanding the biology of the BBB, especially the intracellular sorting inside the endothelial cells, to efficiently transport larger molecules using a natural receptor. We show for the first time, based both on in vitro and in vivo findings, that the way you interact with the receptor at the BBB determines how efficiently a large molecule can cross the brain endothelial cells, a process termed transcytosis, and thus um, crosses the blood-brain barrier. For example, as previously used, a standard IgG format of an antibody that binds to the receptor in a bivalent mode induces sorting to the lysosome for degradation and thus cannot cross the BBB. On the other hand, by interacting with the receptor in a monovalent mode, the normal intracellular sorting of the receptor is preserved and thus allows uh, extensive transport of the large molecule module that we call the brain shuttle. This BBB receptor binding mode is an absolute requirement for brain exposure, as shown in this graph of the paper. The bivalent construct DFAP shows absolutely no plug binding in the brain. All construct was captured within the endothelial cells due to missorting to the lysosome. Not even a week after injection of the DFAP was it detected in the brain tissue. On the other hand, the monovalent construct SFAP was detected at the plugs already eight hours after injection and basically all plugs were decorated. So compared to the parent antibody, the SFAB construct, which have the single brain shuttle linked to the antibody, show more than 50-fold more exposure in the brain. By attaching this monovalent brain shuttle module onto an antibody, in this case an antibody against A-beta, we describe in the paper how this antibody is efficiently transported across the BBB by binding to the transfin receptor. The transport is through the brain and the T-cell cells in vesicular structures. In the Alzheimer model, we show that the actively transported antibody engages extensively with the amyloid plaques in the brain and prevents its formation. The prevention of the formation of amyloid beta plaques in the transgenic Alzheimer mouse model is shown in a chronic treatment over 14 weeks at a concentration where the parent antibody that doesn't contain the brain shuttle has no effect. However, when the antibody against amyloid beta is coupled to the monovalent brain shuttle, there is extensive target engagement and buildup of plugs in the transgenic animals is prevented. We believe that the results described in the paper will be important for the future use of large molecules in treating various brain disorders. We believe that this brain shuttle system, as we call it, can be used for other types of large molecules as well, like peptides, enzymes or growth factors.